Josh the RV Nerd of Bish's RV with a brand new Fusion floor plan for you. And when you think Fusion, you think big fancy pants toy hauler fifth wheels like this. But that's not what we're talking about today. Today's new floor plan? This new floor plan. Fusion is uh, branching out and they're expanding their family and they have come out with their, their smallest, lightest, least expensive toy hauler yet. Um, and they've moved into the world of what you commonly refer to as stick and tin production. You know, wood studded sidewalls, aluminum skin. But what this one represents here, this is what I call, you know, camping for Larry Lunch Bucket and Jane Six Pack. Folks, it's still punch a clock for a living. And you want to go out, you want to get dirty, have some fun on the weekends, but you don't want to go broke buying the hauler because you want to spend your money on the toys like a side by side or a motorcycle or what have you. That's where this one comes in right here. It, you know, it doesn't have the monster onboard generator stuff. And it, it falls in, in line and category. Like if you're wondering, what is the RV pecking order and echelon of this thing? It'll fall in line roughly with something like a, a Wolfpack Gold Series, where it is still a full-size, full-body toy hauler where it's extra tall, it's extra wide. Um, you know, it has the, the big showers, the tall ceilings and all that kind of stuff. And it has like around a 4,000 pound cargo carrying capacity. So you can actually put some big stuff in this thing and haul some major cargo if you want to. But it's, it, you know, it's just on the, the more straightforward, everything that matters and nothing that doesn't side of things right here. I will say though, the nose and the, the total exterior, look at this thing. For something that is being a little more price sensitive, they still gave it a little bit of a shine of shoes razzmatazz, if you ask me. But that's just my two cents. Now, the underbelly of this is still enclosed and forced air heated. Still power jacks all the way around. Uh, you got their Dynaspan floor decking. And keep in mind, what we're looking at today is a prototype. Some things will change, like... Um, Floor vents, they are not going to have floor vents in the floor of a garage on this. This was just kind of an initial proof of concept. They walk through and that's got to change, that's got to change. But overall, I think you're going to get the general idea here. And I'm curious to know, what do you think about this one? Let me know as we go. And once again, I know I basically had just mentioned it only a few seconds ago. But I do want to almost begin uh, our full deep dive here by reiterating the fact we're looking at a prototype. Some things are going to change, like the floor heating vents that you see, they ain't going to stay there. They're going to get rid of them. Uh, Fusion, this is not their first time making a toy hauler. And um, I, I was a little surprised they even dabbled with the concept, but obviously they recognized like almost immediately, yeah, that doesn't belong. Now, um, it does come with a, uh, a miniature telescopic ladder so that when this top bed drops down, you can climb up there. I've only got it kind of hanging in the, the folded down mode just to sort of demonstrate. Obviously, un unless the thing is all the way down, then the ladder's fully extended, uh, you absolutely should not be using that thing. But um, this is not one of the, uh, the power happy jack kind of bed lifts here giving you an idea of how all this looks and and works so you've got like the theater seat style rollover sofas on the bottom they have this like really heavy duty mechanical latch that you sort of like it locks in place it doesn't need extra straps and stuff which was kind of cool but um the top bed it's just on a couple gas struts it goes up and down super fast, super simple. You can lock it, obviously, in the up position, so it doesn't, like, if you hit a massive bounce on the road, it doesn't fall down or get twisted or something like that. And that's really about the only caution that I have for those. Um, when you're pushing it back into the up position or pulling it down, you, uh, you know, you, you want to make sure that the side that you're pushing or pulling up or down first, you push or pull all the way. If you don't do that and then you start working on the other side, it can get twisted and get bound up a little bit, and that can be a little bit of a trick. Usually you can work your way back out of it, but that's not something you necessarily want to do. Now, they did um, maintain their Dynaspan floor decking, which means a 5 8 floor deck, and uh, it will be, it's seamless. There's no seams in the floor causing potential squeak and creak points, and on a wide body rig like this, that's really handy. Um, it also still has uh, all these D-ring tie-downs. They're actually anchored right into the chassis. I think they've been pull tested for like 5,000 pounds. I actually saw years and years ago when Fusion first started adopting that system, they, uh, they actually built one of their chassis, mounted a four-seat Razor side-by-side -side, um, ATV to it, and then hung the thing upside down. They flipped the chassis with the, the, the four-seater on it, and uh, it held. Nothing got broken. Nothing got damaged. I want to know which of the factory employees volunteered their side-by-side -side for that excursion because that is a person that had a lot of faith in what was going on. You might notice this little uh, diamond plate piece of trim. That's where the tail actually dovetails down because this is a bigger size. It rides high enough 
that the angle of attack for loading can be a little aggressive and they don't want you necessarily scraping your underbelly, ripping your pipes off. And whether you're gonna use it for dining between the uh, the two sofas or just like out here for picnic patio time or if you're gonna do a elbow drop off the top rope WWF style, brother, oh, yeah. uh, it comes with that little portable picnic table that you can use also as a shield from gas station murder hobos. And I kind of noticed for evening hangout time, the uh, flood load lighting up here, they have two of those. That can also double some really nice kind of patio light action if you want to stay up uh, a little bit later. Now, um, the uh, again, the two sofas, you can fold one or both up uh, out of the way. Uh, the RV's 100-inch wide body, and you have 13.4, 13 feet 4 inches from the back of the tail to the front, uh, basically where that refrigerator cabinet base stops or starts rather, um, 13 foot four of loading. But that I do believe is actually before you fold in the ramp patio gate. And I'm operating from some rote memory here. But as I recall, you need to subtract about nine inches off of that 13 foot four inches uh, to actually get your effective loading space because the those gates do fold into the RV. Now there's 100 million billion different little measurements. Um, and there's way too, like if you ask me, hey, can my whatever fit in this? I, I don't know. I don't know the measurements of all the things out there. Contact our team with measurements of your golf cart, your side-by-side, -side, whatever. They can hop out here. They can hand uh, tape measure everything and they can give you a more definitive answer. Whereas I can really only kind of estimate. That is a 12 volt compressor fridge, by the way, uh, pairing hand in hand with Keystone's uh, recently expanded solar package. We'll talk a little bit more about that outside. And entertainment in a no-slide toy hauler like this often is not awesome. And I'm not gonna sit here and tell you this is amazing, but from this uh, sofa, the one that faces toward the, uh, the poop side of the camper, that's where you'd mount a TV. Really, that ain't too awful bad. I don't really dislike that. This thing also benefits from a chunk of counter space, man. And with it being a stick-built RV, hollow walls with uh, hand-tucked insulation, they can put power outlets that happen to also be inverter prepped all the way down that sucker, which is nice. And a lot of brands are getting rid of propane ovens. It looks like Keystone has maintained them quite a bit. Um, while we're looking at the kitchen, let's open everything up. One of the things I liked is you have, you know, good cabinet space, no traditional pantry, but overall good cabinet storage space and a space for a wastebasket down there below the sink, which is uh, another really kind of nice touch. Um, additionally, you can see how, you know, it might be a little tricky to get into some of that upper corner storage, but at least it's there. So you might want to bring a little one or two step stool with you. Cause again, being a bigger full body size toy hauler, You've got some taller ceiling stuff to, to kind of condense uh, with there too. Um, working our way back, let's head over to the uh, bathroom space. We're gonna go right by the water heater controls. And I'm always curious about this because I feel like it's kind of nice to have access to the water heater controls for the tankless water heater, both um, here in the hallway next to our you know full command center. It kind of makes sense that all this stuff is right here. But at the same time, it also feels like that's something that you may want to have access to while you're actually in the bathroom. But I don't know. I, I actually have a suspicion. It's one of those things where once you figure out where you want to set your water heater, you're going to leave it there. Um, you know, kind of like at my house. I can adjust the temperature on my water heater for my whole house. I, I don't know if I've ever done it. I think maybe we did it once when we first moved into the house just to get it where we liked it from the previous neighbors or uh, occupants. But... Uh, I don't know. I don't think you're going to mess with it too awful much. Uh, you're also not going to have to mess with ducking in the shower, brother. That is one of the nice things about these big toy haulers. Frankly, I don't think they even need a skylight. I kind of wish it wasn't there. And the skylight, the extra lighting is nice during the day. But at night, it doesn't do you much good anyway. I tend to be a night shower person. I don't know about you. Um, and uh, it's, it's, in a sense, it's just another hole in the roof that could be a potential leak point that I really don't want there. I wish that blank wall had some kind of octopus fight club towel hangers, towel bars, towel hooks, something right there. Being no slides, it's by default basically pretty much carpetless all the way through, except where you have that little strip of diamond plate flooring. Not a whole lot of USB outlets in this one, but if you have household plugs, and especially if they're inverter prepped, you can just put a you know conversion thing into that, make it USBs, although you do have a couple over there maybe for phone charging. TV hookups over here on this wall because the wall across from the bedroom actually, or from the bed itself, actually has a pair of sliding doors. Uh, we're going to get to the second one of those in a second. But first of all, something that really shocked me. When I saw this thing, I was like, this is going to be 30 amp and one air conditioner. But it's not. It's 50 amp 
and available with a second heir. I, I didn't predict that was going to be the case myself. Now, one thing, it took me a little bit. I actually had to go grab my little laser measure thing here. But that is a short queen bed. That is a 60 inch wide by 74 camp queen. There's room to walk around it if you got a longer bed, but you'll be doing the butt scoop boogie against those sliding panel doors. So kind of keep that sort of factoid in mind right there. Um, the bedroom's definitely very plain, but uh, I mean, it's it's function over fashion once you're at this point in a price point kind of camper. Looking down below the bed, you see another little symptom here where it does lack any sort of um, gas struts uh, to, to easy lift the bed. I did have to kind of, you can pick the mattress up and wedge the decking in there to make it work. And next to the bed, there was that little, what do you want to call it? Like clothes hamper, kind of laundry hamper thing. Now this over here in the corner is actually far bigger than you would think. Take a look at this. I kind of use my own body for scope and scale. That uh, uh, corner closet actually wraps around. So it's bigger than the actual entry door. So you can really stuff a lot of stuff uh, in there. And I think around the corner is probably where my wife's dad would keep the old BB gun. He is, uh, he, he's got a little pellet gun that, you know, some little critter climbs on his wood pile, uh, you know, for his wood burner in the backyard. He, he just, he repays the audacity of that sucker with a BB to the backside. <laughs> This is one of those RVs that when I was younger in my career, I would have said, you know, it's 7,000 pounds. You could tow that with a half ton. But as I've gained more experience and learned more about towing, that is no longer going to be my recommendation. I would say something like this would be a better fit for a three quarter ton pickup because yeah, the RV empty weighs about 7,000 pounds, but you are legally required to be able to handle the full GVW. So add about 4,000 pounds to that, get up to that around 11,000 pound mark, and that's the total weight that you need to be able to handle on this one in case you load it crazy heavy with cargo. Not to mention, toy haulers are notoriously heavy on the hitch weight because they actually expect you to put, you know, a couple thousand pounds in the back, probably above or behind the axles, and that does yield a slight bit of a cantilever effect. Think of it kind of like a seesaw where you will lighten up the nose. So toy haulers, uh, even, you know, whether it's one of these trailers, whether it's a fifth wheel, they do tend to ride and handle better when they have a little bit uh, of uh, you know weight in them. And again, they gave this thing, I think, a really good look. It looks like it's moving fast even when it's sitting still. And somehow it's both linear and has a giant swoosh on it at the same time. I'm not exactly sure how they pulled that off, but they did it. Power tongue jack on the front, power corner jacks all the way around. And up front here, this might be something you've never heard of or you don't realize how awesome and important this is the giggy box. Basically, it's um, a battery disconnect on steroids. And the reason I say that is when you do flip that disconnect, it 100% uh, percent prevents parasitic load from eating away at that battery, which most do not. Now, it does have a full pass-through. The door's a little smaller on this side because of where the freshwater uh, intake is located. But I like how even here, that they're more price sensitive, they're still using that heavier garage flooring in the front pass-through. That was a shock. I, I did not expect to see that. Um, over here, that's actually a solar disconnect, tire pressure monitor prep, and your new 30 amp standard charge controller for your now 220 watt solar package, which is the minimum package you find on all Keystone RVs. So even their most basic single axle RV, Keystone still has 220 watts of solar and a 30 amp Victron MPPT charge controller. If you're not familiar with all those words, Victron is one of the most respected brands in the world of like solar hardware. MPPT is just a superior version versus PWM uh, solar charge charge controllers. So this is some of the very best standard hardware that you're finding out here. Now, this I thought was really interesting. We've got a sewer hook up there and it looks, I guess that's where the black and the gray from the bathroom come out. Um, as we work our way back, we have a, uh, a hot, cold outside utility shower and black tank flush. But then over here, just past that tankless on-demand water heater, we have door number two. Uh, with our second of the crap caps, as it were. But that is actually just the kitchen sink drain. So this is a two-stage sewer monster, but they're so close. And with the location of the kitchen, I was a little surprised they weren't plumbed together. But just because the kitchen's located there doesn't mean that's where the holding tanks are located. It might have been a situation where, because of where they had to mount the tanks in the belly, that was the best they could do. You know what else this kind of reminds me of? This is... Uh, kind of right up in the category of like a Grand Design Mav 
That's also what this is up in the knickers of. You know, they're both 100 inch wide body, have the full tall ceiling. Uh, you got the ramp patio package here, but this being a more price sensitive series, you're not going to see something like one of those big fancy pants, three seasons walls on the, on the backs of here, nor will that be an available option. It might be possible to aftermarket that, but uh, I, I'm, I'm not aware of one. Um, the, uh, where am I hearing music from? Oh, we're at this display. I think somebody turned some speakers on somewhere and I thought I couldn't tell if it was my phone or what it was. And you probably can't hear it with the noise canceling microphone that I'm using and you just think I'm absolutely crazy. Terrific, this really turned out well. Actually, now that I talk about the rear door, I don't see any sort of tent roll down screen wall. This being an early prototype, that might be a feature that's going to be included on later models. If that's an important widget or whiz bang to you, make sure you contact our team members and have them investigate that because currently I do not have that detail available to me at the time of this uh, recording, my apologies. Now our spare tire is kind of belly mounted down here. Remember this is an enclosed and forced air heated underbelly, which is nice. You have the uh, gas grill cooker hooker right there. This is running on import tires. Those are not good years, so you're going to want to kind of keep that in mind. Above those, you have your uh, TV hookups, and then uh, all the way up uh, by the top of the awning, which it's actually a nicely sized patio awning, but you got your outside speakers up there. Um, I'd probably bring a portable Bluetooth with me. I wouldn't be blowing away the neighbors, but something like this, you might be parked in the middle of nowhere, and you just want to crank the music up, and worrying about neighbors, well, won't be so much worse. Wow, they fully finished that off. I hadn't actually looked at the top of the pass-through until just now. I actually, I like how they actually kind of clean that up. I did not expect it. So I've talked way too long on this one. This is your chance. Let me know what you think about it. And while you're doing that, check a link, uh, the links rather, in the video description to see uh, where we might have some of these in stock and what we're asking. And if our website doesn't give you any results, it just means we happen to be sold out right now. And we're working to get more. Overall, I think it's very smart that they branch out like this because there's folks like me that uh, I'm not necessarily going to be an RV full-time, you know, toy hauling and cruising around. That's where these big guys come through. And that is the new Fusion 325, another brand new floor plan. Side patio, rear patio, partridge in a pear tree. Let me know if you want me to get some footage on this one, and I'll see what I can put together. But until then, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.